bracing. This is going to penetrate. Good evening. Civilized towns. You look a man direct in the face when you talk to him. This isn't comfortable. Oh, it's not supposed to be. <laughs> Here's a uh, situation. Serious. Mrs. O'Dwyer was abducted. She is my everything, and those savages have got her. God knows what they're doing to her in every second. They'll be delayed. You know who did this? They don't have a name. How many of them do you think there are? It won't matter. You have no chance against any number of them. I'm, I'm coming with you. No, no, I need you here. And this is what a backup's for, to help an emergency, not stay back. I'm coming. We're making a five-day journey in three days, riding long and sleeping the bare minimum. I don't know what's west of here. No cattle trail or anything else goes in that direction. If our horses die before we get there, when we go into hostile territory, weak and foggy with exhaustion, we won't rescue anybody. Don't be scared. I am a friend. You aren't. You had no cause. If you want to question my morals, do it later. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive. Fans are experts, movie month. It's my sixth year doing movie month. 30 movies, 30 days, 30 podcasts that you get to listen to. Fans are experts, movie month. It's my sixth year doing movie month. 30 movies, 30 days, 30 podcasts. Guys, did you get to listen to including this one right here? But wait, one more time. Fans on Experts, Movie Month. It's my sixth year doing Movie Month. 30 movies, 30 days, 30 podcasts that you have the pleasure of listening to. An episode is about to start right now. An episode is about to start right now. The theme song is fading out because an episode is starting. Wow. All right, Chris, I finally watched it. And, uh, damn, that movie was something. I mean, wow. Folks, I just watched Bone Tomahawk, a Western, written and directed by S. Craig Zaylor. I believe is his name. I'm outside right now, so it might be a little windy. And uh, this movie was, I think it said 2015. It felt like a small movie, but with a really good cast. Great acting. Tremendous acting. Um, A lot of familiar faces. Starting right at the beginning. Some surprising. Some um, just good to see again. And, uh, I color me impressed, I guess is what I have to say. This was a, uh, like at some point it felt like a small movie where, I mean, it's, you're just dealing with four characters and it's sad and it's humorous, not funny, but humorous. You did laugh. And then at some point scary, almost like weirdly horror. And then brutal as 
hell. Brutal. Where it's like, all right, I'm going to watch this. I'm not going to look away. I'm going to see um, them do this to a man. Yeah, I'll get to it. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know a lot about this movie. I, I don't know a lot about this director. I know that I've um, I know that he wrote uh, a Puppet Master movie, and um, I guess he he makes brutal movies as far as violence, overly realistic, raw type of movies. He has another one. I don't know if I'm going to see that this year. I might, but um, I'll see it eventually. This one. Well, let me start by saying how awesome the cast was. Um, I, I turns out that I might be becoming a Patrick Wilson fan. I might be becoming one. Um, a couple of days ago, I saw him in The Conjuring. You know, I, I, I the first time I remember seeing him years ago was in Watchmen, uh, the superhero movie, the Zack Snyder three-hour epic from an old comic book. That's the first time I remember seeing him. And he's just kind of been in things to me. You know, I, I didn't really pay too much attention. Then I saw him in The Conjuring, and I, I just, he was, you know, not that it was like an amazing performance but i just enjoyed it and here he is again this time again i enjoyed it let's talk about the plot so fairly simple so it starts off with uh two thieves who you know it's the old west they, they go around killing people stealing from them and i was surprised to see david arquette like was one of the thieves and sid haig is the other one sid haig i've known from like the rob zombie movies uh, he's, he's been in a bunch of horror movies and David Arquette, you know, he's David Arquette. I haven't seen him in things in a while. And I wondered if he was going to be a big part of this. He, he was a big part of the plot, but he was not a big part of the movie. So these guys are robbing and stealing people and they escape through, um, what appears to be an, a native American Indian burial ground. And while they're going through, they, these uh, Native Americans, natives come in, and Zed Haig, bing, bing, boom, he's dead. David Arquette gets away and runs to a small a small little uh, town and buries all his stuff in the, out, in the uh, out before he goes into town. Goes into town for a drink. Now, he gets spotted by a uh, the deputy of the town, Chicory, who is by far the best character of this entire movie, Richard Jenkins. I mean... Jesus, this guy can do anything. You know, he could tell um, his adult son to shut the F up and I laugh my ass off in uh, Step Brothers. And, and then he could be the uh, the the um, psychiatrist in something, uh, something About Mary who doesn't pay attention to anything that Ben Stiller is saying. And then he can be, uh, and I know he's been in like, a, I think there was a movie where he was um, a, a I don't know if he was a transsexual or something where he dressed as a woman, something they, that he got a lot of great uh, um, notoriety for. And then in this, he played like the old, like the old Southern prospector kind of guy, the, 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 the well-behaved, well-mannered uh, chicory. He was the deputy to the sheriff, uh, and he just had a, just a way with words. In other words, he, he never shut the hell up. And he spotted uh, this guy coming into town, go, go, you know, told the sheriff, I think he spotted him. I watched the first part earlier today. Somebody spotted him. And he, David Arquette's in town for a drink. Um, Kurt Russell is the sheriff. And they head over to town. They head over to the bar uh, to see what the hell this drifter coming into town is all about. Bing, bang, boom. One thing leads to another. And uh, David Arquette tries to escape. Kurt Russell puts a bullet in his leg. And therefore, he needs to spend a night in prison. And they need to get the doctor to help operate on him, to get the bullet out of his leg. But guess what? The doctor is a drunk. So they have the next best thing. They have a nurse in town who just happens to be the wife of Patrick Wilson, who I was talking about before. Patrick Wilson, I think, looks to be a guy who works with cattle or... I don't know if it was cattle or logging or something like that, but he had an injury where he busted up his leg. So he was laid up at home uh, and just kind of moving around at the whim of his wife. He, you know, um, 
they, you could see that they're in love, and he, she wants him to read a love letter. She called it a poem, but it was just a love letter he sent to him, sent to her a while back. Uh, and they're just a young, happily married, loving couple. Um, now, back over at the restaurant, or the, the the restaurant, the bar, the saloon, where they need to uh, go get um, the dock, they send uh, Matthew Fox. Did I mention him? Matthew Fox. I wasn't quite sure what he was. So Matthew Fox plays this guy, John Bruder, and they say he is, I think someone said professor. He just seems like he's a man who's well-learned, educated, thinks he's better than everyone, knows he's smarter, or at least more educated, and um, is a bit of a, a bit, he has a bit of snobbery, a bit of douchebaggery. But, and he also has a thing or had a thing for Patrick Wilson, uh, Mr. O'Dwyer's wife, Mrs. O'Dwyer. So even when uh, he, he goes over to get uh, her and says, the, the doc is drunk, we need your help. She's like, okay, just routine thing. You could even see then Patrick Wilson is like, oh, uh, he doesn't like Bruder being around his wife. Because Bruder had designs on her many, many years ago. Uh, I like to talk Southern and like I'm, I'm in the old West. Um here's the thing those uh native americans i don't even want to call them native americans these these are you know the savages that you that are uh, the native americans get um un un uh unjustly unjust unjustly called these things were savages and and i will get to that so they tracked David Arquette to the small town. It's all David Arquette's fault. Everything that happens in this movie is David Arquette's fault. They track him to the small town. They go, um, they find a stable boy and they gut him and kill him. I think they might have stolen a horse or two or did, did something. But they smashed this guy's head in with a tomahawk. Was it a... Metal tomahawk? No, I believe it was a bone tomahawk. And when everyone wakes up the next day, they find the stable boy dead. They go to the prison. All the doors are open. The prison's open. No Mrs. O'Dwyer. No drifter. Buddy. David Arquette. It's all your fault. So, there's been a kidnapping. And... Well, they got to go tell Mr. O'Dwyer. And he's like, you need to sit down. Where's my wife? You need to sit down. And this guy can barely move, can barely walk. But he loves his wife so much. He's like, damn it, I'm in on this meeting. They, he drags himself over to a, a, back to that saloon where they have a Native American guy who, who lives in town who is, you know, uh, seems more westernized or more Americanized or whatever you, I guess, Native Americans are Americanized. Um, and they talk to him about what these people are he's he says they're not they're not natives they're not uh tribes they're they're savages tra troglodytes which i think they live in caves or something and they they're separate from other things they're savages um there's a there's just little character things where all of a sudden uh michael Perret is there from eddie and the cruisers he's just a guy in town that's it small role bing bing boom he's out uh they're gonna bury the stable boy uh, sean young played the mayor's wife and it seemed like Kurt Russell, as the as the sheriff, respected her more than him. Told her what was going on. Told her what needs to happen. Told her what she need, what she needs to do. And she's like, you need to address the mayor. And he just kept telling her. So I thought little things like that where it doesn't. There's no payoff. There's no explanation. Just a little bit of character where it's like, okay, she runs stuff because she talked a lot more than the mayor. Kurt Russell knows this. He knows how to get things done. And that's why he addressed her. I thought that was kind of cool. Kurt Russell, you know, looks, um, he doesn't quite have his Santa beard, but he's got that whole, just a big, like, I think of Wyatt Earp beard, big hair. Uh, the dude was, the dude's killer. He was just made to, you know, play Western roles. Perfect. Just, he, he barely has to change his look. Just grow a little beard out, add a little twang to your voice, and uh, awesome. I think the last time I saw him in a movie was, well, th it was a Christmas movie on Netflix where he was Santa Claus. He was not Santa Claus in this movie. He was 
Mayor Sharp, I want to say. I think it was his last name. <clears throat> There's a little moments where they're getting ready, and his wife is like, you don't have to do this. You know, they're, people thinking these savages took them. They pro- they, the guy was saying they eat them. They're probably already dead. They took the David Arquette. They took um, this guy, another deputy, and they took the woman. And, you know, Kurt, Kurt Russell's like, I have to do this. I promised Mr. O'Dwyer I would. I have to do this. He just was like, you know, he's a man of honor. And he has to do this. Um, Chicory, the Richard, Richard Jenkins, Jenkins, I'm coming. I'm coming. There's no way he wasn't going. There's a nice little scene where he goes and gives flowers to his wife and says, um, you know, I'll be back here. I'll see you back here soon or up there. Uh, and Michael, Michael Fox. Um, uh, what's his name? Matthew Fox. Uh, John, John Bruder. He um, he feels he owes um, the because he's the one who got Mrs. O'Dwyer in this in the first place. He's the one who went to her house and said, "We need to help." He brought her into it. He's the one who went to her when the doctor was drunk. I would go beat the shit out of the doctor. Uh, and so, for the longest time now, for the big chunk of the movie, it's these four guys. Because guess what? I don't care if. Uh, Mr. O'Dwyer doesn't care if his leg is uh, maybe infected. He doesn't care if it's in pain. He is going. He's getting on that horse and he is going. And the big chunk of the movie is like a road trip um, where it's just four different men all on the same mission, you know, for various reasons. And it was just like a series of character moments and acting and it was awesome and Richard Jenkins like was the anchor the whole time just kind of like asking lots of questions talking a lot of things bing 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 boom he was like so impressed that Matthew, uh, Matthew Fox's character had like a telescope that he called the German that was like German design really fancy they had another one they called Vanguard that was theirs it wasn't as good um, so like at one point they're looking out for the for the uh, for the savages for the troglodytes and he looks through the, the telescope and he's like oh my god I wish I had this when I went to the rodeo. There's like serious stuff going on. They're gonna, they could go get killed. And these are the kind of things that he's saying. It was, he was amazing. Um, <clears throat> now, the, they, were going, they were moving along as good as they could. Uh, Matthew Fox set up a tripwire with bells on it. He's like, if that goes off, you shoot first. You want to live, that's how you do it. And, you know, they're like, you don't have to kill people constantly because Richard Jenkins doesn't, doesn't like the way John Bruder kind of acts where... He thinks he's smarter, he thinks he's better, uh, and he will kill no matter what. He's like, I'm going to keep you safe. And then that was the way Matthew Fox's character, John Bruder, was. Um, just kind of, you know, standoffish, kind of prickish, and, but, you know, he was there to do what he wanted, what he said he would do. Um, the bell did go off at once, and he shot, and he probably killed the dog or a wolf, and you hear the, the thing crying in the distance. And, you know, I don't like, I hate hearing that sound. Um, and I was just like, oh, um, but that's exactly what he was there for. At another camp, these two uh, Mexican men show up and they're like, I'm putting down my gun. And I swear the bell went off a third time and Matthew Fox just went bang, bang, kill them. They were going to talk to him. Uh, that was a little, there was a lot of tension there because um, uh, Kurt Russell was like, I was going to get information from them, something. He's like, they were part of a raiding, raiding group or part of thieves or something. He goes, there was, he goes, I stand by what I did. Uh, I don't care, you know. Um, Matthew Fox's other thing is he hates Indians. He hates these savages, he calls them. And he, 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 he kills, um, he's killed so many. And they're like, there's nothing to brag about. And he's like, I'm not bragging. He's just stating the fact. He's killed more than anyone else has. Um, and, you know, they keep moving along, moving along. Now, the, um, oh, this is what happened. So, they wake up one day and they're getting attacked. I mean, it was like there was no dun 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 music or anything. It was just like you heard signs of a struggle. It was uh, Patrick Wilson wakes up, sees a guy on top of Matthew Fox, shoots him, and Matthew Fox is stabbed, but he's okay. They get away. They steal all the horses, and Matthew Fox is uh, John Bruder. I want to call him John Bruder. Bruder's like, you know, there's no way my sussy would would go with these with those people, and uh, then he's like. I think he did put up a fight and they look over and there's a horse struggling, barely alive. These, these assholes, you know, 
stole these horses. I, maybe it was the savages, actually. Stole the I forget. I don't remember. Um, I don't think so. Someone's standing over him. Stole the horses, uh, killed or, uh, you know, uh, maimed the other horse. And he had to go up and say, you know, thank you for your service and killed the horse. Um, that was sad. And at one point, Patrick Wilson's uh, Mr. O'Dwyer's injury got so bad that they were like, look, first it's like, you go ahead. We'll catch up with you. Then it was like, we have to leave you behind. There's no way you're going. At one point, I thought, oh, my God, are they going to take the leg? They even hint at it. They show a saw because Richard Jenkins' um, uh, chicory, he had some, he has some medical uh, experience from the war, which is obviously the Civil War. Um, we keep talking about the war, the war. And I was trying to think, well, late 1800s, this is the Civil War, <clears throat> excuse me, that he's talking about. Uh, and he was like, you know, talking. he said something like, you know, I've seen something that bad in the war. It was bad. Uh, um, but he didn't take the leg. They head off. Patrick Wilson is left behind. At one point he wakes up, he looks down, still sees his leg, and he just keeps on his journey. Now, before he's on his journey, the other three men who the Native American helped figure out where they were, the Native American back in town helped figure out where these troglodytes were. And they, they kept track. They, eventually they tracked him down. And really that is when this show, this movie went from um, a classic Western adventure on the frontier to savagery. Absolute savagery. So they're looking at a, te- you know, they, they're looking at these caves and bing, bang, boom, freaking right away. Matthew Fox's arm is almost chopped off. Uh, Kurt Russell gets an arrow in the arm and uh, like a rock or something skips off of Rick, Richard Jenkins, Rick, Richard Jenkins head. He's got this big wound in his head and Matthew Fox is like, you know, I forgot how good he shows pain. I, I'm a big lost guy. I loved him in lost. And it's just the, the, the emotion he, you can read on his face was like, was awesome. And he was, he was done for He knew he was dead. He knew this, you know, um, something that nothing good was going to happen. So he's like, um, okay. He said, um, oh, what the hell happened? Oh, he's like, leave, light me a cigar. Leave the dynamite with me. I'm going to take out as many of these as he can. He talked, he told earlier that he said, he, or he said, uh, I, he didn't want to talk about how many he killed. He said many, not all of them women, not all of them men. Uh, and it turns out he's killed men, Native American men, women, and children. So, you know, not great, not, not a great character trait, but when he was a kid, they killed his mother and his sisters. So that's the way he sees it. Eye for an eye. If not worse, take out as many as he can. Now, these guys, these troglodytes were way worse. Like the, you know, Native Americans, I feel like were fighting for their friggin. I feel like they were fighting for their land and for their, and for the, you know, their, their families. These, these, these guys were like monsters. Um, I guess fighting for food. We'll get to there. So he's like, I'll take out as many as I can. And these guys show up and it's all in broad daylight too, which is like. Oh, these guys, and they're all like head to toe, like covered in clay. And uh, Matthew Fox looks at it, and you just see this thing <laughs> throw. And it looks, I think it was the, you know, you, you don't really see it right away. When you come back later, you see um, <clears throat> they Richard Jenkins and Kurt Russell goes away. They're like, all right, let's get out of here. When they come back later, you see a big giant tomahawk in Matthew Fox's head, a bone tomahawk. It looks, I don't know if it was like made of. It made from some animal. They took a giant bone, carved a friggin' tomahawk out of it. Um, like the whole movie, like the title of the movie obviously is in reference to that. But it's, it's even that is savage where it's like the weapon of choice of these troglodytes is the title of the movie. I don't know why they chose the title. It's, it's an awesome title. Uh, but it's, a, it's an interesting one that that's what they focused on. Um, when it's really a, a, a f- four men on the open trail trying to save some save some people, the weapon of the quote unquote enemy is what is focused on is what the title is. Just just uh, worth mentioning. So they're dead. Uh, Matthew Fox is dead. Kurt Russell and Richard Jenkins, you know, leave because he's going to light off dynamite. He never does. They come back. They get caught. 
whipped up into this tunnel, into this cave, and um, oh, Lily, Lil, uh, Mrs. O'Dwyer is still there. Lily Simmons. I honestly know her from Hawaii Five O, but I just another face I recognize. She's there. They're put into a into a jail. She's put into a jail, and they're like, "Where's uh, the drifter?" Oh, they ate him. Oh, okay. So David Arquette was in the movie for a few minutes, shot in the foot, put in prison. And then um, he was later eaten by these savage troglodytes. Um, my God, it's 11.15 p.m. I have 45 minutes to get this on the Internet for it to count. So let's, let's hurry along. So the, these, these troglodytes are like, you know, they don't talk. But they have this weird, this weird screech. This is that is almost supernatural. So I don't know if, what these. I don't know how they did this because Patrick Wilson is making his way through, and he uh, shoots one of the. He's getting closer and closer. He confronts one of these troglodytes, shoots it, and sees something in its neck. Digs it out, and it becomes like a like a whistle almost. This I didn't understand. Were these? Was that like? biological just like these were just different humans they were like evolved or something i don't know they, these, these weren't put there so that was confusing but it was cool that's where it almost felt supernatural uh and there was one guy who had bones sticking out of his face now that could have been done you know by he could have done that himself but um yeah that was wild and they they they, rah, they make this giant screech with this whistle and now um Patrick Wilson had one for himself. It was like having a, uh, a duck call. He'd blow it, and someone would come, bam, shoot him. Meanwhile, back in the cave, they, um, you know, they're trying to break out. At one point, Kurt Russell gets his fingers chopped off, or some of them. It is just savage shit happening. But the most savage thing of all, oh, remember that deputy? He's still alive. They take him out in front of all of them. And basically to put on a show, I think, in front of them to say, this is what's happening to you. Strip him naked, scalp him, I believe stick the scalp in his mouth, then flip him over upside down, spread his legs. I'm sure there's a term for this, but they take that goddamn bone tomahawk again and start hacking and hacking and hacking until two other troglodytes tear him apart, tear him in half. And I'm like, what the F? This was a small movie with four guys on the frontier. Oh, now there's a guy with a bone sticking out of his face who can scream to the heavens, chopping a man in half from the balls down. Because he's upside down. Disgusting. And then a couple scenes later, he's chewing a leg like he's at the, uh, like he's at the, the friggin' King Richard's Fair. Got a big turkey leg. So that was, uh, like, it was weird. That it's a weird thing with the whole neck thing, but I, I just went with it because I was loving it so far. Uh, so Lily Simmons has been there. Mrs. O'Dwyer has been there long enough that she's counted everyone. She's like, there's 12 men. There's some women that, that are blind. They just keep pregnant, blind and lame. They just basically they use them to impregnate them and make more of themselves. Uh, and I left out a small little plot point. Because I've been talking so goddamn long. I love that small little point where um, Mrs. O'Dwyer left opium for her husband because he is sick. He's hurt. But they don't want to use too much opium. And at one point, uh, he brings it with him. And the sheriff and the deputy find the opium. And they take it from him because they don't want some drugged up guy with him. Uh, he was like screaming at him. But then he apologized. Kept the opium. And they kept the opium. And uh, they gave him a little when they when they finally uh, had to set his leg after another fall and left him behind. But they kept it for themselves. So they used the opium to trick the troglodytes into drinking it. Some of them got sick. Some of them, One of them died. So that helped a little. But really all it did was piss them off because they threw the, the flask they had in the fire. Then later took Kurt Russell out and said, hey, buddy... Um, you know, because you did that, I'm going to take this bone tomahawk, again, bone tomahawk, slice your belly open, take that flask, shove it into your flask. Then I'm going to take this gun. I'm going to figure out how to cock it. I'm going to shoot your nuts off. Yeah, that's what they did to Kurt Russell. Now, you didn't see any of that, the cutting of the stomach. 
like basically once he's tied, he's down and his shirt's open and the look on his face of like, oh, this is happening, so much pain. But it was when they shot him, I believe shot him in the nuts, uh, the look of like, huh? It was just like, almost like it didn't even hurt. It was just like, what just happened? Like he was in shock. That was like just that little eye thing that Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell did was awesome. Um, but here's the thing. They, um, all of a sudden you're hearing other shots. Bang, bang, bang. Cause Patrick Wilson shows up. So the guy had the tomahawk, tomahawk on the ground. Kurt Russell picked it up, chopped off half his foot. The guy fell down and then he went whack, 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 chopped his effing head right off. Patrick Wilson shows up. Kurt Russell's like, I'm going to die. Sorry. So you got to leave. Leave me with the gun. There's three more of them out there because they Lily Simmons was able to count how many there were. Mrs. O'Dwyer. And uh, Chicory's still alive. He's like, Chicory, you need to bring these people back and have a talk with Mr. O'Dwyer. I think maybe the talk is let's remove your leg. I don't know what else the, what else the talk could be. Um, or have a talk with him about becoming the new sheriff. Maybe that's what it is. Ooh, I like that better. Um, Kurt Russell stays behind. They make their way out of the tent. You actually see one of these women, pregnant, lame, with things stuck in its in its um, eyes to keep to blind it. The woman, um, and they get their freedom. So three people were kidnapped. One of them made it out. Four people went to save them. Two of them made it out. So. We had seven people, four dead. I don't count David Arquette. Well, I guess I do. I did count him in the dead. Um, but uh, just, like, I, I went over the whole thing. I hope you saw the movie. Otherwise, I spoiled it. Re- um, and, and there's a podcast I listen to called um, Hellbent for Letterbox, which is a couple guys that I've just listened to for years on different various podcasts. They talk about Westerns. Uh, and I don't know if I, I listened to them talk about this a while ago. But uh, I'm going back and I'm listening to it again because now that I know it, not, I, I forgot. If I did listen to it, I forgot everything about it. So watching this again or listening to it again will be great. Um, and I think that's it. I mean, I left out a bunch of things. At one point, Richard Jenkins talking about flea circuses. And it was just a nice little moment because he was just looking for something positive to talk about. Well, they all thought they were going to die. Uh, Matthew Fox made a comment about it, about um the guy's wife and Mr. O'Dwyer, Patrick Wilson punches him in the face and he's like, Hey, I'm risking my life out here for you people. And you know, it was just like, I, I feel like I earned the, the right to say some, you know, something crude like that. And he's like, well, you haven't. Um, so I, it just little things of little things that happened. I thought were, were, you know, just interesting, well-written, the acting, sometimes it was just the words they said, a lot of clever things. Sometimes it was just the eyes and the looks on their faces. I love stuff like that. And there was music in this. But at, some point, at one point, I'm like, was there any music in it? Like, I didn't even notice it. And it was, and when I, when I realized there wasn't music in it, like, is because, like, things were happening. And it wasn't like, bum, 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 bum. It was just shit was happening. And there was nothing but the sound of what, you know, the real life sounds of savage violence. Uh, there was a score I, I heard it towards the end. So I'm sure there was a score throughout. It, sometimes it just happens in movies. You don't even notice it. But I like the idea of minimal amount of music. At the end end, during the credits, there's a song where it's like four men ride to their doom. And I was like, this is a weird song. It had a it had like a old, old you know, uh, country Western feel to it, but it, it didn't feel that old. So I looked and the writer director is credited as one of the writers of that song, that four men ride to their doom. It was just a very strange, weird country kind of twangy song and four men ride to their doom or four riders to their doom or something like that. But it was cool. I liked that. I liked everything about this movie, even the, 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 the violence. It was like, that, that's what happened. Even the weird, like, what are these creatures? Because they seemed to almost a little bit of like creatures. Like they didn't talk at all. Um, and they had this, this weird extra thing in their neck and they could communicate by screaming. 
So I don't know. Were they were they some kind of special creatures? I have no idea. But it doesn't matter because the action was great. The acting was superb. The just the the visuals were awesome. I enjoyed the shit out of this movie, Chris. I don't even know if I'm doing it justice. Thank you for recommending it. Thank you for pushing it. Thank you for yelling at me for for uh, for watching the Meg over this the other day. Because uh, um, yes, I deserve that. I I finally watched it, and I'm glad I did. Uh, and now I got to get this up. I got 35 minutes. All right. Folks, you know where to find me. Instagram, Twitter, Geek Mentality, Geek Mentality, Facebook, Fans Not Experts. And the website is fansnotexperts.com. Now, tomorrow, I'm back on the train. I don't know what I'm watching yet. I have a couple things downloaded from Netflix I might try. I have a couple things on my tablet I might watch. But I will be watching, and I will be recording, and then I'm going to go watch the friggin' Bruins hopefully win the Stanley Cup. That's tomorrow. This was today. This was Bone Tomahawk. Thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Because I'm kind of funny and awesome. I think that I'm worth your time. And I'm kind of handsome. My mom says... Please listen and please subscribe. At least listen to this episode. Fans not experts.